For regular videos on ancient cultures and forgotten civilizations, please subscribe. Hello and welcome. My name is David Miano and I'm answering voicemails. Let's give one a listen. As I'm sure you know, there is a prolonged conversation in much of the United States regarding policing and the role police officers and law enforcement plays in society. My question for you is, could you talk a little bit about what we know about how ancient societies police themselves and generally what their concept of law enforcement was? Sure. And thank you for your question. Maybe I should start out by noting that the word police is derived from the Greek word polis, which was the quintessential ancient Greek political unit, sometimes called a city-state. So the word police inherently is connected to a state's executive civil force, which is entrusted with the duty of enforcing state regulations for prevention and detention of crime and the maintenance of public order. But we'll get to the Greeks and Romans later. Let's first go further back than that to talk about early methods of law enforcement. The oldest known systems used what we call kin policing. This was a system in which everyone was responsible for the behavior of their own extended families. In other words, law enforcement was the responsibility of everybody. In many cases, there were not even written laws, just behavioral expectations according to the norms and traditions of the group. Members of a clan or a tribe simply banded together to enforce the rules of the group on members who went rogue. Things changed when states formed, though kin policing did still exist to some extent. During the Old Babylonian period in ancient Mesopotamia, around 1800 BCE or so, civil law and justice were overseen generally by the king and his administrators, but the enforcement was largely local. No official police force existed at this time, but towns did have a civilian night watchman, and there was someone called a redu who was a semi-military official that maintained order. By the middle of the second millennium BCE, the Redu has developed into a kind of police captain, but he now carried an official staff instead of a weapon. We can assume that he had men underneath him. In the Assyrian state, the official who administered the law in cities was called a Rab Ali. He had under him a militant tribe called the Itua who acted as policemen. They had a direct overseer called a shaknu. They were usually armed with bows and had a reputation for cruelty and for harsh treatment of prisoners. During the time of the Neo-Babylonian Empire, 6th century BCE, a police official known as a pakudu emerged. Pakudus seemed to have been in charge of on-site investigations of petty crimes. He also performed arrests. Often, judges and courts would base their decisions on the discoveries of the Pakudu. All of this is an example of increased specialization in the bureaucratic apparatuses of empires. Now what about Egypt? Well, in the early days, kings and nobles hired private guards, but there was no official police force. When we get to the fifth dynasty in the Old Kingdom, the late third millennium BCE, we see evidence for fighting men being used as police, most notably Nubian warriors, known as Medje. They were armed with wooden staffs and were tasked with guarding public places. It appears they used dogs and monkeys to apprehend criminals. In the time of the Middle Kingdom, early 2nd millennium BCE, Egypt created its first standing army and its first professional police force focused on law enforcement. The police force became more organized in the New Kingdom, late 2nd millennium, and the judicial system also was reformed. The king's vizier is the one who appointed the chief of police, who is called chief of the Medje, the name being a carryover from the time when the police force was mainly comprised of Nubian warriors. Interestingly, police officers not only enforced local and state laws, but they served as prosecutors, interrogators, bailiffs, and they also administered punishments. There were even special units whose job was to enforce temple law and protocol, but they had to be trained as priests first. Part of temple law enforcement included preventing blasphemy at festivals, which 
basically means inappropriate behavior on such occasions. Other special units were assigned to watching over the royal necropolises, safeguarding border crossings, guarding caravans, supervising the transport and daily labor of slaves, and protecting important administrative buildings. Like most other places, Greece, too, started out with kin policing in early times. There were no official laws or punishments until the 7th century BCE, which is when the Athenian Draco issued our first set of laws known in ancient Greece. The law code of Solon of Athens came a short time later. The Greek city-states did not really have official police forces. Cities often employed foreign slaves to keep the peace. In Athens, they had, for a time, Scythian archers employed with that task. Sometimes you will hear it uh, suggested that the Cryptea, an elite military unit in Sparta, was used as a police force. While the Cryptea, from time to time, was used to enforce order here and there, policing does not appear to have been one of its primary functions. For the most part, when a crime was committed in ancient Greece, it was up to the injured party to bring the offender before the magistrates of the city. If the injured party was incapable of arresting the criminal, he could summon the magistrate to do so, but this would only be in cases of theft, murder, rape, or adultery. For other crimes, the magistrate would send the accused a written summons to appear before the magistrate. We don't know much about law enforcement in early India. One of the earliest texts on proper conduct is the Apasthamba Dharma Sutra from the mid-first millennium BCE. It prescribes that a king should appoint uncorrupted officers and subordinates in towns and villages for the protection of the subjects against thieves, who should be obliged to make good what is stolen. It's not until we get to the time of the Maurya Empire, 4th to 2nd century BCE, that we have our first evidence for a state police force. The state was divided into districts. There was a head of each district called a Vashayapati, who was responsible for keeping the peace and detecting crimes in the district. Uh, the district was then divided into administrative units, which also had officers in charge of maintaining law and order. On the village level, the village head, called the Gramini, was responsible for policing activity. He would discharge his duties with the help of the village community. So at the grassroots level in those days, a collective policing was in operation. The Gramini was paid and was assisted by an informal council of village elders. He's not mentioned as being generally responsible for the police duties of the village, but he had the power to expel persons from the village. Larger towns had a different police organization. There was a chief of police called a Nagarik. Uh, the Nagarikas were expected to maintain law and order, look after the administration of jails, and check on the defenses of the town every day. He also took custody of any lost property. Masters of households were to report the arrival or departure of strangers and travelers, and to detain persons of doubtful character and who possessed weapons. Suspicious people were to be arrested and punished. Even persons throwing dirt on the street were to be punished. At that time, policemen were on duty for three hours at a time. During the period of the Gupta Empire, 4th to 6th century CE, the police existed as a separate organization. Watchmen usually wandered around the town or on roads in search of thieves, and they would carry these walking sticks, which also could double as weapons if needed. Rome originally had citizen-led militias to fight crime, but Augustus Caesar, Rome's first emperor, who ruled in the late 1st century BCE and early 1st century CE, created what we call the urban cohorts. They were men from the Praetorian Guard, a special unit of the army charged with guarding the city of Rome. The urban cohorts were assigned to ensure peace in the city. They patrolled the city day and night. But as crime increased, Augustus formed the Vigiles, or watchmen of the city, who were not affiliated with the Praetorian Guard, and they were charged with fighting crime and fires. Yeah, they were highly organized, well-trained, and were given the power to protect and arrest. But I should emphasize the fact that firefighting was their main job. The police functions, including detective work, dealing with disturbances of the peace, chasing down thieves, and guarding buildings were secondary. 
How about China? Well, early on, as we've seen in other places, they had a system which organized people into family groups that would be mutually responsible for each other's good behavior and who would share each other's punishments. In the Han Dynasty, the capital city, Chang'an, grew to a huge size and crime became a concern. The city had numerous gangs which engaged in criminal activities, including burglary and murders. To maintain order to, in the capital, the Han emperors strengthened the law enforcement mechanisms by establishing security agencies, first and foremost to protect the safety of emperors and the members of the royal family. The chief administrative official of the capital was called the Chang'an Ling. Under him were officials specifically responsible for law enforcement. An official called the Shan Wei was in charge of maintaining order. He had a number of officers under him known as Shan Yu, and they were basically the police. They were responsible for patrolling the city streets and apprehending criminals. Outside of the capital at the local level, prefects, the chief administrative officers of prefectures, were given the responsibility for maintaining peace and order within their jurisdictions. But most of it was handled by their deputy. Under him, officers provided law enforcement assistance. In each prefecture, there was also a local security agency known as a Ting. A Ting was a kind of, well, it was similar to a police station. They were established in villages, towns, marketplaces, ports, and along roads. The Ting was headed by a Ting chief called a Ting Zhang. Ting chiefs had to be literate. They had to have military knowledge and to know how to use weapons. Uh, he had line officers under his command. The responsibilities of the Ting included patrolling streets to prevent the breach of peace and apprehending criminals to, the, to be brought to court. But kin policing did remain. Groups of five families were formed into a unit called a Wu. Members of the Wu supervised each other and made sure that no members committed any crimes. If a member committed a crime, it was the responsibility of the Wu to have the person apprehended and produced before the court to be punished. And if your Wu failed to apprehend an offender, the other members of the Wu would receive the same punishment as the offender would have received for the committed crime. As you might expect, just to be on the safe side, it was common for Wu members to tell on each other. Anyway, that is a basic overview of ancient policing. I hope that answered your question. If you too would like to leave a question for me, you can do so at speakpipe.com slash David Miano. And if you would like to support the channel, you can do so for just $2 per month at patreon.com slash world of antiquity. You might like my little e-booklet, Why Ancient History Matters. It's designed to persuade people that the subject is important, even in the modern world. You might also wish to use it to help spread the word. So feel free to share it with someone you know. It's free for anyone who wants it. I've left the link in the description box below the video for you to grab a copy. Catch you later.